say from the non-parasite, mostly from the non-parasite side. So, uh, and I thank the organizers for inviting me. Uh, I will focus today's presentation on uh, veterinary medicinal products aiming to induce specific immunity, and it will uh, limit and on for use in finfish and in species being cultured in Europe. I will not cover the uh, products aiming to improve non-specific defenses, uh, of course, no, no therapeutics. Neither will I discuss products for use in crayfish, or crustaceans, or uh, mainly for use in uh, species being cultured in Americas, Australasia, or uh, Africa. And I have to acknowledge a couple of old friends and colleagues who have given me hopefully correct or, or at least uh, reasonably uh, correct information uh, in the following for the, this talk. Uh, vaccination is, of course, disease prophylaxis and control. It is basically the, 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 the applied side of immunology research that is optimized where you use uh, the results of immunology, basic immunology research, and optimize and document it in, in vivo, both through experimental and uh, field studies. And it is, uh, it is a tool, they, they are tools to prevent clinical disease or pre even sometimes prevent infection which today would be much needed for Corona, as you know, um, to reduce spread and control. And it is among the various strategies on disease control, it's probably the most powerful in the short term, which means it normally vaccination normally takes effect in a fish in, after a few weeks to a few months. I put up a, a, a small glance and, and let's say the, the research publications started in the 40s, 1940s, but uh, in the, there was a very, a very important uh, scientific meeting in uh, 1981 with a symposium in Litauen, in the USA, uh, that started actually the interest in, in vaccination and, vac and vaccine development, and where, where you still will find references that are, that are often quoted in articles. That is, um, it's published in uh, the, the, the Developments in Biological Standardization, 1981, and there were two follow-up uh, seminars, uh, one in 1993 and one in 2003, were published in 95 and 2005 from the same series. I think the, the a second key event was the introduction of massive mass vaccination against bacterial infections in Atlantic salmon farming took place in Norway from 1991 uh, to 93 and came and in Scotland also until 1995 then the, the, let's say the establishment of a large uh, a large usage of vaccines much larger than ever had been before uh, was done but covering mostly bacterial diseases and the, the third event that was mentioned already that we are actually in the first the DNA vaccine technology a vaccine for Europe was the fish virus vaccine uh, in 2017 and then the, and the first worldwide was from the US uh, in 2005 also uh, in a fish vaccine actually one day after the licensing of uh, of a DNA vaccine for horses so it's uh, so it means that we are uh, in technology wise we are in in that respect quite advanced in the fish field This is an attempt to try to, to give you a broad picture of the usage of uh, licensed vaccines for Euro in European farming of salmonids. Uh, where, although we are far north and small, we are having the most fish vaccinated. Uh, the estimates coming from Hannes organization is something like um, uh, 413 million uh, uh, doses of a multi of multivalent vaccine plus uh, almost 100 million doses of a monovalent vi uh, viral fish vaccine. We're followed by Scotland, uh, also who also implement vaccination against uh, multivalent vaccines and pank and, and uh, uh, either multivalent, including PD or or uh, monovalent vaccine. 
Faroe Islands have 22 million and estimates for, I've been told for Iceland is 15 million fish altogether, uh, Ireland 6 million, which means that it's, let's say roughly spoken, we're talking about a, a, a product which sells in more than six, 600 million doses per year or products that sell. And don't, uh, don't, um, the precision of this estimate is quite low. The, but as you know, the salmon is, is a high priced product. And actually, as we speak, they think the, an eight kilo salmon um, harvested at which a, which a weight of eight, eight kilo salmon has today on March 11th, the same value as one barrel Brent oil from the North Sea. The first hand value. So which means that, that these are these are these are complex vaccines, they are multivalent, but they are also relatively spoken uh, among the the expensive uh, most expensive vaccines for fish. This is uh, this this pie chart is also stolen from uh, from Pharmax uh, summary a few weeks ago. You see that the multivalence vaccines are are in this are are dominating a lot. Most of them there are five diseases in one from in one vaccine dose, but there are and there's a smaller uh, range of products which have anything from two to four uh, to four. Uh, antigens included in the same uh, dose and even some uh, uh, have seven with pancreas disease is, uh, is included in, a, in one dose. And uh, in the salmon field there are relatively few monovalent vaccines uh, in use but the pancreas disease has come both the DNA vaccine and another uh, product an inactivated vi virus vaccine are monovalent and also yersiniosis vaccination is uh, are normally or often done as monovalent formulations either for injection or and yersiniosis vaccines also for inversion uh, immersion uh, the administration uh, well, 30 years ago when i started with this there are people going can you really inject inject uh, fish with vaccine it, that that was seen has been seen as impossible, and it's uh, thinking thirty years of experience shows that it is absolutely possible. Now, for the high for the salmon uh, farmed salmon market, where there are all there are all there are already uh, developed automated injection machines, uh, were based on on uh, optical uh, technology that can do a lot of this. And this link is provided so that you may see um, actually how this uh, mass of such a machine works. Uh, give you a sh sh very short, you don't need to see all the two and a half minutes, but uh, this is, uh, this is the, the manufacturer's uh, advertisement who puts in the machine. How oh, such a, a vaccination room is operated and uh, there is one operator who can vaccinate at least, you know, several hundred thousand fish per day. But I don't, don't think we need to see the, the video if I can able to cut it down. Let me see. Okay, let's see if we can get back to the, yeah. So this, this is of course uh, for, for large parts of, uh, of European aquaculture, not a realistic, but manual injection works fine. Um, estimate, and, and it's a, a, a proportion, even a high proportion of, of uh, even salmon, Atlantic salmon are still injected, uh, vaccinated manually. In a teamwork, you could, um, anything between one and 2,000 fish per man hour, which means that you with a team of five can have uh, 10 or 50,000 fish per day is not a problem. 
Um, then the less uh, common ones in, in salmon is administration by immersion or bath exposure or oral administration is very uncommon. Although for 30 years people have thought that oral vaccines would be the solution, nobody has really been able to, to pull it through uh, to uh, any significant degree of success. We, with the salmon coast, for, for currently in Norway, the cleaner fish species, as you see the lump sucker up in the, on the right hand side and the, the RAS illustration showing last, you know, uh, nipping off lice from the salmon underneath uh, on the bottom. Um, these are also vaccinated and the, very, the typical, uh, typical um, vaccine formulation would be bivalent. Uh, Aeromonosomonicide and Vibrio angularum antigens and also emulsified uh, in, in a oil adjuvanted formulation. And there is a quite a substantial delivery of autogenous vaccines for, lump, for cleaner fish that may have the, the both uh, antigens mentioned above or even additional bacterial antigens, for example, Moritella viscosa, Vibrio splendidus and others. For the cleaner fish species, there are also autogenous or licensed monovalent bacterines available so that you, you can start immunization early before they lend themselves for injection uh, to, to receive an in injection. Approximately 30 million of cleaner fish is being produced every year in, in Norway. And uh, corresponding the number of doses is, is uh, more than 30 million. Maybe. Now here I'm getting on on uh, on loser ground, so probably Panos can correct me or others from Spain uh, in the Mediterranean mariculture. Um, we're also talking. I was also uh, uh, told that probably in total some more than 400 million doses were injected with the bivalent uh, vaccine. And in addition comes that uh, these species on an early stage can, are being vaccinated by immersion, by dip vaccination. And also uh, for Nudavirus, there is, an, uh, there, is, there is vaccines available, inactivated virus vaccine. Um, Probably mostly used in in reproducing a fish that is uh, this is uh, dedicated for reproduction to avoid or to reduce uh, and, and prevent from vertical transmission of the virus. In the three uh, bacterial, uh, except for vibrios and pastoriosis, some vaccination of Eremonas veronii. Um, I think that's in Greece. Uh, Tenacibaculum maritimum, there is an injectable bacterium uh, available uh, and also streptococcosis. For, but these are, I think, uh, Spain. These are, for example, available in Spain. But that means that in total, the, uh, we are also talking about maybe 600 million doses in total if you, if you add, if you if you uh, summarize the injection doses and the immersion doses. But I think these come at a, at a different cost level because the animals that are being vaccinated are, of course, uh, not so big and uh, the value per animal is, is much smaller. For the, the one, the sector I know least about, is the freshwater growth of salmonid, cyprinids, or perkids, perkid fish species. Uh, classical furunculosis and yersiniosis is are uh, relevant to all uh, mostly Euro most European countries. Um, atypical furunculosis would also be uh, highly relevant for some of these uh, for for farming freshwater farming of. Uh, of these species. Um, Lactococcosis, as far as I know, in Italy, maybe also in Spain. Uh, Streptococcosis, uh, as also there is a lot of these are publications from Italy and also I think in uh, vaccine available in Spain. And the carp, 
uh, although that was a species which was used to be vaccinated very early in history. I think the herpes virus uh, is uh, there are, it's, it's relevant. Um, the, the, the coverage of vac vaccine, I must say, I'm not, uh, not quite up, updated about. So let me come uh, use a few slides to say what how I see the the uh, development of new fish vaccines for in Europe. I think the, some vaccines are needed for the endemic viral infection of salmonids. We are talking about the piskin reovirus, which in our in Norway uh, gives rise to a disease called heart and skeletal muscle inflammation. And recently, so has also the Danes have found an inflammatory heart uh, condition associated with this uh, real virus. Uh, we have a second one, uh, a second um, disease, which is much like a sudden heart death or a sudden heart failure in Atlantic salmon called cardiomyopathy syndrome, CMS, uh, which is called by a, pis by a piskin myocarditis virus. That is a very costly disease and it's quite widespread. The infection is quite widespread because it is the big almost harvest dry, uh, ready fish tend to die, uh, especially of during handling, like we have to deal with in, um, in the, when we want to control sea lice or kill disease. The third uh, fish vaccine for Europe, I think it, there, is, uh, there is an opportunity, maybe one of the short, uh, the, 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 the easiest, the lowest, lowest hanging fruits is to, to find a vaccine solution for sleeping disease of rainbow trout, which is uh, in uh, Pondria trout in continental Europe, is, has been described and, and plays a, a, some role, maybe not the most important one, but uh, originally described from England and France. I think uh, the atypical frankulosis vaccine for several species are relatively high on the, on the priority list uh, when, it, when it comes to uh, new fish vaccines. Uh, the, a lot of people have been working with uh, atypical frankulosis and there is likely specific antigenic strains either for each value change or for each species or for each region. And that is, uh, I think it's probably not likely that we're going to see multi-species vaccines against atypical furonclosis, but rather a range of, of uh, atypical furonclosis vaccines uh, with uh, slightly different uh, aeromonas antigens. And I think uh, the flavobacteriosis is uh, one on the third. Um, because uh, in the rainbow trout, uh, rainbow trout fry syndrome and columnaris disease and these, these, uh, these biofilm building uh, forming bacteria tend to uh, cause uh, ulcers and wounds and is, uh, except for and even in the fry some acute mortality and both in, and in several spaces including the salmon the ulcerative disease is caused by tenac tenacibaculum species which is a group of the flow which i think is grouped with the flower bacteria is also a hitherto unresolved uh, problem in terms of uh, real prevention and adding the herpes virus three vaccines for cyprinids no Hanne was uh, mentioning already, uh, there has been, people have been concerned and are still concerned about the lack of vaccines for, uh, or that lack of uh, not only therapies, but also for vaccines for large part of uh, the, the smaller uh, industrial uh, aquaculture in Europe. And I've been trying to figure out how do I think they can, that, that's new fish vaccines can happen. And I think that the cascade use of existing vaccines in, uh, by, you, by virtue of the cascade prescription uh, instrument or by virtue of specific authorizations uh, by national medicinal authorities are, uh, is one way of, let's say, having more vaccines available. 
for example, PD vaccines to control sleeping disease in rainbow trout. My personal opinion is that you may even uh, employ uh, good PD vaccines to, to more, uh, in attempts to eradicate that infection from certain sites. And we have uh, the, the, uh, a threat of an, uh, a virus uh, infection, infectious hematopoietic necrosis, is endemic in parts of Europe. And there is a DNA vaccine against ISA and IHN licensed in Canada, the USA, where a cascade, where the, the, the expansion of the cascade principle, like uh, Hanna was mentioning, is, would actually be very useful and could provide us a tool for disease control. I would argue and, 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 and argue that we, while, while doing so, you should actually be. Uh, the suppliers should build documentation on safety and efficacy alongside and during field use of, uh, of, of vaccines from uh, existing vaccines that are prescribed uh, on the, the cascade. And that, that, that might be the, uh, a way that, how, that you could extend SPC indications to new uh, European disease control purposes and achieve uh, where the market warrants uh, a, a better availability. Uh, the second point, what, how to make new fish vaccines happen. Uh, there is no need to be afraid of autogenous vaccines, in my opinion. There is a, there is a, in, and I think probably in the industry, there is a difference between the large pharma companies who see autogenous vaccines as a threat to their market share and the small ones who see it as an opportunity. I am more in favor of, of folk or, or emphasizing the opportunities that lie in autogenous vaccine com concept. In my opinion, there is no need uh, for any, for the practice that you should, uh, that arises from terrestrial farming of husbandry animals, that you should make new isolates every six months and use those in ma for manufacturing. I don't think there is a need for that because in the, in the production chain of farmed fish or by natural distribution uh, mechanisms, there tends to be, uh, the situation tends to be that certain antigenic strains are shared along a production chain or along a uh, a natural uh, distribution of, uh, of uh, rearing water. So that is one of the, the questions that are being discussed and we will, I think uh, we will see how that, that uh, turns out. But the, for the benefit of expanding the, 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 the availability of vaccines also for smaller uses, the, the, the autogenous vaccine concept should actually be, not be uh, reduced. Also there, there is uh, opportunity to build documentation uh, about, on safety and efficacy alongside and during field use. Uh, and uh, in animals, uh, on an animal including fish health, there are, of course, some minor species, but there are very many minor uses. And that, so that is maybe more, uh, that is, is one of the issues in the aquaculture sign, that there are a number, even though the species, uh, the species uh, var uh, range is, is not uh, that wide, there are a wide range of minor uses, and that uh, must be, uh, let's say, followed up and, and, and Argument is an argument to uh, to uh, make it easier to give it this uh, vaccine development a try. In my, if you're talking about brand new uh, fish vaccines, new antigens, totally new formulations, I have the experience or the and, and the, the belief that big pharma will only start the development of fish vaccines that from its major turnover and profit. I've been working in pharma company myself, and the question is: It was always, if there is, if the economic prospects went high enough, you were, you didn't come on the priority list. 
So fish vaccine development driven by research findings or by specific user needs, but that may be volume limited, they will likely be carried out by innovative startup companies. Or maybe for or, or a small or medium-sized veterinary vaccine companies that wish to expand into the aquaculture market. The ability to generate some form of the income through supply of autogenous vaccine is, act, in my opinion, essential to allow the, the, the latter and to, to, to increase the range of uh, new vaccine products being developed and tested. No, but if that is going to, to gain acceptance, the users of fish vaccines, which means veterinarians and fish farmers, they actually need to organize and, and communicate the well, need for you. Rob, but you have two minutes left. Yeah, I think I'm going to be done. So that, that is one of the, 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 the parts, and we actually, the, in, the, in the very hard years, 30 years ago, we were, Norwegians were quite good at this. We are not so good anymore in to document and communicate the need for new, new fish vaccines and have, have other parts of society join in. So I would say that it's uh, both on the veterinary side and the aquaculture side needs to engage in raising financial support for vaccine development projects in, in one way or another. And they also need to be uh, awareness of to, to prove the real benef benefit potential. You need, don't need to, wash, to, you cannot wash, vaccinate one far, one site here and one site there. You really to need to promote and, and execute mass vaccination to really see the magnitude of the benefits that can be reached. So there is actually uh, a new uh, IABS uh, symposium coming up in September in Munich in Germany about autogenous vaccines. Uh, for uh, and I would uh, like that you uh, that, that to uh, make you aware aware of this, and thank you for your attention.